Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Neil, I want to welcome you to Canada's podcast. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, it, it's the first time I have officially interviewed a grumpy accountant. Uh, I might have had a few grumpy sessions with my own accountant, but uh, it's, it's nice to meet the grumpy accountant. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, and this is the first of a, a pro probably quite a few sessions that are going to be bi-monthly specials for our uh, entrepreneurial community across the country, uh, really to help them on their you know journey building their businesses across Canada. Uh, and you can expect more to come from us on that in the future with emails, posts, uh, online, on, on YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but um, after you know, I obviously Neil and I have been been chatting, um, and you know we'll come to this at the end. But I think I think the grumpy accountant is really onto something um, in terms of simplifying our tax systems uh, for entrepreneurs and equalizing things a lot more. You know, I, I I've been an entrepreneur in Canada for over three decades, and I'm not from here originally. And frankly, I've seen the tax system for you know small to medium businesses like that, that I run uh, has really moved from 20 years ago. It wasn't bad. I came from the UK where it was quite punitive. It wasn't bad here, and and really over the last 20 years, it, it, it's there's been more and more pressure on it. Less and less, less and less sort of advantages of, of, uh, of being, you know, being an entrepreneur uh, uh, and shouldering the risk. It's really not been very good. So that's that's my quick thing. I'm not going to steal Neil's thing, but um, that's what that's why I was inter interested when he pinged me and said you want to talk to me, and I thought, yeah, well, let, maybe everyone wants to listen to him. Um, but I want to kind of just do a little bit of of our, you know, intro in terms of. Neil, who you are, your entrepreneurial story, how you got there. So, Neil, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um, and, and what you do, basically? Sure. So, I'm an accountant, obviously, um, and I, when I graduated from university, I think it was back in 2008, 2009, and I started working in small and mid-sized accounting firms. I ended up working in four different accounting firms in the span of four years. So every year I switched jobs. And at first I didn't realize why I was doing that. It took a lot of introspection and thinking and reflection. And I realized I didn't like any of the jobs particularly. I realized I wasn't happy. And after I finally obtained my CA designation, now it's CPA back in 2013, I realized that I don't like working for other people. And I wanted to try going on my own. I had that, what I call the entrepreneurial itch that, that most entrepreneurs or probably all entrepreneurs have. They, they realize at some point they need to be on their own, start their own thing. So I did that over seven years ago. I started my own accounting practice and it's, it's grown ever since. But as my accounting practice grew, and as, which was a fun experience as an entrepreneur, growing my own business and meeting other business owners, but I very quickly became quite grumpy and frustrated because of our tax system. I mean, what I do as an accountant is helping people and small business owners, self-employed people file their tax returns and comply with our tax system. And that's what led me to become very grumpy about it and, and, and very frustrated about it. Okay. Okay. You know, just uh, as, as we're going along, everybody, if you've got any questions, just uh, throw them in, throw them in either the question box or the chat box. Uh, Curtis uh, is part of the team. He, he doesn't want anyone to see him today, but that's fine. Um, is, is, is sitting here with us and uh, kind of working the working the background. So if you throw any questions in, uh, we'll uh, it, he'll make sure that, that Neil and I uh, deal deal with it. So you know, but you meet entrepreneurs all the time. Neil, they're customers. I always ask this question because I think that obviously I, I think we are. Are we are, are we wired differently um, than other people you, that, that you meet? 
I, I, I think for sure. Um, I don't have studies and research to back it up, but my hunch is, I mean, the vast majority of my clients are people who are self-employed and small business owners, people who've gone out to, and, and t have, have taken a big risk in starting their own business from scratch. Um, and I think for people to do that, to give up the security of a bi-weekly or semi-monthly paycheck that's guaranteed and to go out and start their own business with zero revenue and zero income and zero customers, I think you have to... I, I think we, we are entrepreneurs are wired differently um, because to be willing to go out and take that risk is um, it's not easy as I'm sure we all know anyone who's done it, it's not easy. And I think you definitely have to have an extreme amount of motivation and you have to be able to willing, you have to be willing to be able to, ignore all of the naysayers, people who will tell you, oh, well, that's crazy. You're going to quit your job and start your own business. What are you thinking? That's, that's ridiculous. You can't do that. It's, just, it's insane. But you think about how every business start. I mean, Jeff Bezos started Amazon in his garage. Michael Dell started building, building computers in his dorm room. Mark Zuckerberg was in, a, in his dorm room writing code for Facebook. People, you take a risk and, and you start a business. You have to be wired differently. I, I think so. Okay. So let's get back to taxes. You know, um, what's the been, you know, what's the greatest challenge you've met in the tax system, the entrepreneurial side, the small and the medium tax system that you you've had to face up to today? Yeah, it's. I mean, what I try to show in the book is is real stories that have happened to clients of mine, real experiences. I would say the biggest challenge is small business owners just trying to comply with the tax system properly. And one of the craziest stories that happened to a client of mine um, is that they paid themselves in the wrong manner, okay? And they, and, and, and they were put through a two-year bureaucratic nightmare. Um, and it, it, was, it was a nightmare for them because instead of giving themselves T4s from their corporations and paying themselves with CPP and income tax deductions at source, they didn't know the rules. They didn't know you had to do that. They showed that salary income as self-employment income on their personal tax return. The series said, no, 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 no. It has to be on a T4. And they, ha and they forced them to redo like two years of tax returns, file T4s, pay and repay that same amount. They already paid the tax and CPP on their personal tax returns. And the CRA made their corporation pay it, even though it was already paid, but it was just the wrong method. So all the correct amount of income tax and CPP was paid but it was done in the wrong way. And that, that story really was kind of pushed me over the edge. And, and I actually filed a service complaint with the CRA because of that. And it's stories like that, that I find so challenging. It's people are okay with paying a reasonable amount of tax. Most people will say, yeah, I'll pay whatever percent of tax that's fine, but make it easier for me, make it simple. Why does it have to be so complicated? So the biggest challenge, and this is what the book is about, it's the complexity of the system, and I'm calling for a massive simplification. So, you know, let's move on to the book a bit. I mean, I must admit, you know, why write the book? You don't expect an accountant to write a book, you know, about tax reform. I mean, it's, it, it's how you make your money. <laughs> you know, you, you make your money after sol solving people's sort of, sort of tax woes kind of thing. So why kind of stand up for, you know, tax reform? Well, that's exactly why I wrote the book. I mean, what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm helping a couple hundred or a few hundred people every year comply with the complicated tax system. But, and that's how I'm earning a living. But I don't, I'm 35, I just turned 35 years old. So let's say I have another 30 years to go doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, helping a few hundred people every year. If there is a way I could help millions of Canadians um, not even have to comply with the complicated tax system in the first place, if we could simplify it, and then people wouldn't need my services and they could save money. Canadians right now spend on average $500 per year per household 
to file their individual tax returns. That doesn't include businesses and corporations. We have 40,000 employees working at the CRA, 40,000 CRA employees. Um, that makes them probably one of the largest employers in the country when you think about it. And um, their budget's almost $5 billion a year. So my goal with this book, the reason why I wrote it is because I felt like I want to do something other than just help a couple hundred people every year that have to pay me for my help. I want to do something that would help millions of people. And if I can advocate for a simpler tax system, and if the ideas in the grumpy accountant can actually become or help influence government policy, then it would help many more people other than just my clients. And I felt like, I mean, I, I feel like this every night I'm, I'm in bed trying to fall asleep and the thoughts running through my head, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about what am I doing with my time every day, tax season, filing tax returns. I, I, I want to help more people and I don't want people to have to um, keep receipts for six years and go through CRA audits and reassessments. And um, that, that's why I wrote the book. I, I, I wanted to really do something else other than just, you know, tax season every year. So on, on a style level, which is, I found it, I found it interesting. Uh, and and it, for those that haven't read it, it makes it a good, quite fast, uh, easy read. You made it a fictional journey. You know, you, you, uh, you know, Maybe you can, why, why did you do that? Because, you know, if it's taxes, you think dry, boring, you know, why, why, why make it a fictional journey? Yeah, when I started writing the book, I mean, the reason why it started is because I would complain every day to my wife after work about everything that happened that day. And she grew tired of this and she said, stop complaining to me, but maybe you should write down your thoughts, write a blog, write some articles. And I took that advice. Um, and I started writing and I realized there's enough material here for a whole book. So I, I started to compile it into what would become a book, but the original format, I was just writing out kind of, you know, problem solution. Here's the problem with the tax system. Here's how we can fix it. And I realized that that, that format is so dry and boring. And even I had trouble going back rev and, and reviewing what I wrote the previous day as I was editing it. So I realized I have to find a different format for this book um, to make it relevant and readable. And it was around that time I read The Wealthy Barber by David Chilton. Yeah. And The Wealthy Barber is written as a story. It's almost that's like you're right. reading a novel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I felt, oh, that's how I need to write my book. So my book is about Jerry and Elaine and George. And it reads as a story, as, as it's almost like you're reading a novel and there's characters so, and the characters develop. Yeah. Are those characters real? Did they come from your, you know, your, your life experiences, your business life experiences? Well, the names of the characters come from a certain TV show, which I, I won't name because I don't want to be sued by Castle Rock. Um, <laughs> but you can probably guess what show that I'm a big fan yeah. of. But the stories in the book that Jerry is the main character and, and George is the grumpy accountant and Jerry bumbles through the tax system at every stage in life. So the book reads as a narrative, Jerry graduates from university and he starts his first job. And then, you know, then he gets married and he has kids and he starts his own business and he retires. Um, so he goes through every stage of life and he and George are navigating the tax system. But all the stories and the tax nightmares that Jerry goes through are based on real experiences that have happened uh, to my clients. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I received permission from my clients to include their stories. And I had to, you know, change around some of the details a little bit. But it's all true stories. And that's what, you know, some of the feedback I've been receiving has been people kind of in shock that some of these stories are true, but they are. They are true stories. So we're going to get some questions here. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, did you consult with the CRA on some items in the book? But to see Angie has thrown out the question, so we'll, we'll take Angie's question, which is quite similar, is do you have any CR influences that are sympathetic to your cause of tax reform for the benefit of creating a more business-friendly culture and system in Canada? Is, so is the question people at the CRA specifically? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was. I, I remember once I had a phone call. I, I'm on the phone with CRA agents all the time. And I remember once an agent said to me, I was complete. We were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with a particular rule that made no sense. And the agent basically came to agreement. She said, look, you're right. This law makes no sense, but 
if you want to, but I don't have a choice. Like she said, I have to apply the law, but you should contact your member of parliament and try and change the law. And I said, actually, I'm writing a book about this and, and I will change this law one day. Um, so there are people at the CRA who are sympathetic, but like they can't do anything about it. The le- it's, and I write this in the book. It's not the fault of anyone at the CRA. The complexity of our tax system is the fault of, it's not the CRA's fault, it's the Department of Finance. And that's headed up by the Minister of Finance. So it's the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance that would be responsible for actual legislative changes to the, to the Income Tax Act and, and to the tax system. The CRA and, and, and what's known as like the Department of Revenue, they don't have a choice, they just have to apply the law. So we have to lobby the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance um, to actually make the legislative changes. So based on reading your book and some of your notes, I, I guess I want to live in Denmark um, because their tax system for small business seems to be a great model. And I see Paul here has a question that's similar to that. He says, what needs to take place from a regulatory perspective to streamline the taxation process here, not in Denmark? Yeah. I think there's a lot we can do it and I'll just focus on, you know, self-employed people, entrepreneurs, small businesses, the compliance burden right now is so great. And I'm not even talking about, you know, tax rates and the amount of tax. Let's leave that aside, just the complexity. So for example, um, one thing I think we need to do is increase the small supplier limit for GST, HST, $30,000. If you're under $30,000 of revenue every year, you're exempt as a small supplier from collecting and registering for GST, HST and filing HST. But that $30,000 number comes from 1991, it's 30 years. And like, have we not had inflation in the past 30 years? Like, what am I missing here? That number should have increased every year. So today that number should be around 60 or maybe 70,000. I think that's, yeah, I think that's one thing we could do to actually relieve some of those people who are under, you know, maybe 70, 80,000 of, of revenue every year to relieve them of the burden of collecting and registering for GST, HST and filing HST returns, because it's a big burden. And um, I think another thing we could do is right now, if you have a corporation, you have to file your corporate tax return, your personal tax return, your HST return, your T4 for salaries or T5 for dividends we should have a way of combining all of that into one tax filing. That's what they do in the United States. There's something called an S corp. I'm not a US tax expert, but I'm a little familiar. An S corp is if, if you own and manage your own company for legal purposes, you could have the corporation, but they combine it into your personal tax return. So you don't have to file a corporate tax return and a personal tax return and a sales tax return and a T4 for your own salary. It's crazy. We, we, we force business owners to have four or five different tax filings and sometimes even more because HST has to be filed quarterly and you have to make corporate income tax installments, personal tax installments, payroll tax, HST payments. Um, so we have to find ways, and I, I, I present these ideas in the book of how to combine that into maybe one tax filing, which would make it so much easier, and also less chance that people will incur penalties on late filing. So there's, there's a lot we could do um, to, to really simplify that compliance burden. You know, I, I've got another question from Angie. Angie, you seem to be following my train of thoughts, but still, that, that's cool. <laughs> um, Neil and I, over the last week or so, have had a couple of chats. And, um, uh, you know, uh, what Angie says is, what are the top two actions you are championing, championing that small business owners across Canada can take to lobby the Minister of Finance? And that kind of falls into the question that I had, was how do we get a movement going to get, you know, small business tax reform on the government agenda because they they're not interested. I mean, they're, they're that's so far away from where they're at. You know, uh, how, how do we, you're talking about lobbying, Angie? You know, I like those top two actions. I'd lo- I'd love to to know what you thought that the two things to focus on would be, Neil. But um, think about the movement side of it as well. Sure. Well, the top two, I think, would be the two I mentioned, increasing that GST small supplier limit. That would help a lot of people. And combining the tax filing so people could have a corporation for legal purposes because they're worried about liability issues and things like that. 
but from a tax filing perspective, allow one tax return. Combine the HST return, the corporate tax return, the personal return, and the T4. Combine those four into one. And it should be one page, one page tax return. Then people wouldn't need to hire people like me to, to do all of that work for them. So the goal of tax simplification, my, not my, you know, if you're asking me to my top two ideas, the goal should always be people should be able to navigate it and do it on their own. That should be the ultimate goal. So those are two things we could do. Um, in terms of a movement, I've been thinking about this a lot, actually, and starting some sort of advocacy organization that's you know nonpartisan, nonpolitical, that that has people participating from all um, all across the political spectrum uh, to call for tax simplification. Because when you think about it, we might disagree on you know whether what the, what the tax rates should be. Are, are Canadians paying too much tax, too little tax? Who should be paying what tax? Uh, capital gains tax, should we increase it? Should we decrease it, eliminate it? I mean, I don't think we'll ever come to agreement on those issues, people from across the political spectrum. But what we should all agree on, at least let's simplify the tax system for as many people as we can, as much as we can. Who could disagree with that? I mean, you, you, even if you know someone's the most ardent kind of communist or socialist or libertarian or fiscal conservative or whatever, anything in between, we should all agree Let's have a simple tax system to save everyone money on all ends. So the advoc I, I've been thinking about advocacy and maybe starting some sort of organization. And I actually have a Facebook group called Grumpy Taxpayers of Canada Unite. And I have also a book launch team. If people really like the book, um, you could reach out to me from my website and join. We're, we're creating a team, a small little community, community of dedicated fans of the book to help spread the word about the book. And that might lead to um, an organization to advocate for a simpler tax system as well. Yeah, on the book, we will be, Curtis is in charge of that. We will be doing a draw from the attendees and uh, letting them know if they, if they want a copy. So, so just, just to, to let everybody know. But, you know, I'm also interested, uh, you know, moving a little bit away from the book and your perspective. You know, you're a, you're an accountant. You get to have, you've got small business clients that you know across. I imagine all kind kinds of disciplines. Um, you know, we've gone through probably the most scary six months that I've that I've experienced, and I've done some pretty hefty recessions in the, in the last 30 odd years. Um, what are you seeing? I mean, what, what's the future of small business in Canada from, you know, what do you, how do you see it, Neil? Yeah, it's, it's very scary. I think it really depends on the particular industry that the business is operating in. I have a few clients, maybe more than a few, that have really been hurt by this, um, by these shutdowns and lockdowns. Some people's businesses, like I have a couple of clients that are in the, the kind of industry like um, party and event equipment rentals and catering, catering events. There's no events now. So these businesses are, they're inactive. They just stopped um, operating and it's very hard for people. It's very scary. Some people, one of my clients, uh, people uh, who, who he's a very savvy entrepreneur. He's, he completely transformed his business from being a um, event and party rentals type business to hand sanitizers. Some people have been able to make that pivot, uh, it's, but it's very hard, um, but he's been doing okay because he did that. But his event party rental business is, you know, zero revenue now. It's very scary. And a lot of people, anyone, you know, the whole restaurant industry, hospitality, they're, they're suffering. It's very hard. I don't know what the future will be. I imagine that eventually the world should go back to normal. I don't think this will last forever. Um, I think eventually the world will go back to normal. I, I hope. Um, but until then it's, um, it's scary. And all the government, programs that they've put in to try and help small businesses, uh, the CBA loan, right? That $40,000 CBA loan, the wage subsidy, uh, commercial rent relief. These programs have been, uh, for the most part, not designed perfectly, let's just say that, and complicated uh, sometimes and difficult to access. And of course, after people 
sign up and receive some of these programs and benefits, the CRA uh, will be auditing to make sure you were in fact eligible for them. So there's going to be a compliance burden there. Mm -hmm. um, next year, tax season 2021, it's going to be a nightmare for many people. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it, it's very scary what's happened. It's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for a lot of people. And I hope, obviously, that eventually things go back to normal and everyone can reopen. I, I think Angie's, Angie's, Angie's sort of on, on the question thing because she wants a bit of free advice from the county. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, but, but she's got one more question here. And, and, sure. uh, and you know, we're, we're kind of reaching our 30 minute limit here. But um, uh, do you know any other country states that have incorporated technology and innovation and achieved tax reform already? That they can look at as a best practice. In, in other words, is there a, is there is there a more like the Denmark thing? Is, is there is there a model place where you know this is the way we should do it? A lot of countries are doing things in a way that's a lot better than how we're doing it. Um, so, for example, in the United Kingdom, for employees, if like they get their T T four slip, the equivalent of a T four there, and then the employee has no further filing obligation at the end of the year. So most people in England and some of those other European countries as well, those Scandinavian countries, um, the employee doesn't have to file a tax return at the end of the year because the T four basically is the tax return. Yeah. Um, now we have this technology here in Canada already. So to the credit of the CRA, this might sound a, a, a little weird for me to say. Um, but to the CRA's credit, actually, they have autofill, so you can autofill your tax return. They have my account, they have my business account, anyone who has an HST account, GST account, payroll account, corporate tax account. You set up your online CRA, my business account. For your individual tax, you set up my account. You could autofill your tax return. You could see all your notice of assessments there. Um, all your T-slips are already there. You could see all your payments, your account balances, your installment payments you've made, all your assessments and reassessments. You could submit documents right through there. They've actually got a lot better using technology. The problem is not the CRA's willingness to adapt and use more technology. The problem is the government itself like I said before, the legislation, our tax returns right now have so many. Look, if you look at your tax return from last year, the calculation for federal tax is nine pages long. It's insane. Look at all the deductions and credits. That's what we have to target. We have to eliminate every single tax deduction and credit, and then you can lower the tax rate. And we could do the same thing for businesses. We could get rid of the expenses and just have a lower tax rate on the revenue, or at least give people the option uh, of how to calculate their, their taxable income. Um, so there's, there's a lot we can do there. But again, it's not... Okay, it's not I've, got, I've, got, I've got stuff on the other coin here. I don't know whether you sure. know Mar Marvin. He was here and said hi from Thornhill as well. Oh. Who's an ex-CRA employee. Oh, okay. Field auditor, fields officer, technical advisor. Oh, cool. so, who, who basically doesn't have a question, but I, Marvin, fantastic input. It says what, what we're advocating, what you're advocating will take light years to implement. The answer is to educate small business owners in the ways of blogs, eBooks, et cetera. Uh, he thinks the CRA is not trained properly. I think he means in terms of working with small business um, uh, and the spike in retirements at the CRA is, is causing them nightmares as well. Probably mm. not enough people to put on it. Uh, he's starting a blog, so maybe you're both in oh. the same in the same town there. Oh, uh, maybe you and he should, should uh, he, he wants to start a blog with case studies, which will have good insight. So, mm. uh, hey, you two guys should get together because uh, he's got stories from the other side. Uh, I think that would be a real, real good thing. Marvin, you, you, yes. you should write the grumpy ex-CRA employee. <laughs> Start writing that. Yeah. And, and finally, you know, we're, we're going to have to kind of, you know, we, we've hit our 30-minute limit. We just try to make the, these live sessions on. Uh, one thing from Angie. You should see this. Get all the big Canadian accounting firms on side, Neil. You know, Deloitte, CY, uh, MNP, et cetera, to, to rally behind the cause. You know. CPA Canada. I've, I've reached out to the CPA Canada has tax committees that are supposed to liaison with CRA and liaison with the Department of Finance from the government to help them and help advise them. The word on the street is that the current government in power right now in Ottawa 
is just not interested in this issue of simplifying the tax system. It's not on the radar. They're not interested in it. So we have to hope. I mean, I, I don't want to get political, but I hope my personal opinion, I'm disclaimer, this is my opinion. I hope for a change in government and hopefully a new government that specifically puts this in their party platform. Um, and I would welcome every political party to put the idea of tax simplification in their platform. But the current government is not on board. Like they just, this is not on their radar. But CPA Canada has this on their radar to simplify a tax system. They know it has to be done. Um, they might not take it to the extent that I do because it would mean a lot of accountants will lose a lot of business. And as Marvin was saying, uh, the difficulty that CRA is having Again, it, it's a very good point, but it proves my point. The, it's the legislation itself that is too complicated, and even the CRA can't keep up with, with administering it. So when the tax system, when the taxpayers and tax filers can't comply with it, and the CRA, which is the body responsible for administering the tax system, can't even administer it properly, we know we have a problem. And the problem is the legislation itself. We have to abolish the current Income Tax Act and redo it. We have to completely redo it from the ground up. And I try to I mean, offer a plan I like that in the book. I think, and I think we just need to keep reminding governments that entrepreneurs, small business is the lifeblood of, uh, of Canada. And, and especially with so many big businesses retracting back to the States or Europe or, or whatever, we, 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 are, we are the future, basically. Um, so... Uh, so Angie, um, I, I'm going to kind of pass that, pass that final question on because I'm, I'm going to bring it to a close. Uh, Neil, just before we close, why don't you let everyone know how, just repeat, you, said, you, you did say how people can get a hold of you, but I think just repeat it again because we were in, all involved in co conversations and dialogue. So just just let's let's tail off with that and, and let people know how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, yeah um, you can just visit my website, grumpyaccountant.ca and there's a contact form so you could just reach out to me right through there and the book of course um well we're going to be giving out some free copies but it's also it's available on amazon.ca there's an ebook an audio book i actually narrated the audio book which was a lot of fun uh if, so if you want to listen to me rant for over five hours about this you can there's but an wait audio book you, as wait well. Wait and see if you win a copy. So that's all I would yeah, say. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, sorry, Neil. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. <laughs> no, okay, definitely. guys. Well, thank you, Neil. That's really great. And thanks, everyone, for, for attending. Um, it's the first of many sessions. It's a, been a, a nice discussion. Everyone dived in with questions and, and input and uh, uh, really, been, really been fun. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll see you on Canada's podcast next time through. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay.